So real-time constraints in robotics can be quite hard to understand at first. What does real-time actually mean? Most robotic systems are subject to real-time constraints. Not respecting those constraints when developing a robot or a robotics application might result in all kinds of issues. In the worst case, the application will completely fail and you may break something and you may also hurt some people. In the best case, well, the performance of the overall system might be lowered. And that's why you must be aware of what are real-time constraints in robotics. So in this video, I will explain to you through some analogies and real-life examples what are real-time constraints, what are the different types of real-time constraints, okay, because there are actually three of them, when should you care about those constraints when you develop a robotics application? And at the end of the video, I will do a special focus on real-time constraints applied to Arduino and Raspberry Pi. And let's get started. Before diving into the explanations, I first want to talk about the common thinking behind real-time constraints. Real-time is a word that is uh, used quite often and many times with a different meaning. So let's clarify things here with the focus on robotics, okay? So usually in the global world, when we hear about real time, we may think of, for example, an online chat, so Messenger, Slack, Discord, WhatsApp, whatever. And in this online chat, the message you type is directly sent and directly visible by everyone in the chat room. Okay, by real time, you may also think of news in real time. Okay, so as soon as a news is published somewhere, you may get a notification or something on your phone, and then you can directly know what's happening right now in real time. Okay, that could be also an application on your phone showing the current temperature in your home. Okay, so as soon as the uh, temperature changes, okay, just by one degree, you will get also the change on your smartphone in real time. So mostly when speaking about real time, we speak about the feeling of seeing things happening at the same time. Okay, you type a message and your friends directly receive it, then someone else answers and you receive the message it kind of feels like you are talking in real time with the other person. With, for example, the temperature sensor in your home, it feels like you are seeing what's happening in real time in your home, just as if you were in your home and watching the temperature sensor directly. Well, real time constraints in robotics are a little bit more complex than that. The feeling of real time here, I'm talking about the feeling uh, that we saw here, does not make a system a robotic system become real-time or not. The definition of real-time for robotics is something different, okay? And now that you understand what real-time constraints are not, let's actually see what they really are and what it really means. So the first very important thing is that a real-time constraint is associated with a deadline. When you apply a real-time constraint to a system, it means that the system must respect certain rules and deadlines in order to be executed successfully. Let's take a very basic example here, which has nothing to do with robotics. I'm going to use a real analogy so you can better understand. Imagine you are given a challenge. This challenge is just to run 100 meters. Okay, You have to run 100 meters. That is the, let's call it the system. All right, now to this challenge, I will add a real-time constraint. I will say that you must finish the sprint under 40 seconds in order to successfully complete the challenge, okay? So, for example, if you finish after 41 seconds or 62 seconds, then you have failed. That's pretty much it. And note that I didn't specify whether you should run fast or slow, okay? Also, as you can see, running 100 meters in 40 seconds should not really be that hard, okay? Real time does not mean that you should apply strong performance 
You just need to respect this deadline. And for those conditions here with 40 seconds, well, if you are in a good shape, you can be quite confident that you will always respect the deadline. And thus, you can say that the real-time constraints here are met for the system. Now let's change the deadline. So you still have to run 100 meters, but now the deadline is not 40 seconds, the deadline is 20 seconds. Okay, I just took an arbitrary number here. Uh, I didn't really do the test myself. Meeting the deadline seems quite doable, okay? But maybe not every time. If you need to repeat the challenge a hundred times, you might start to feel tired and you will slow down. And thus, it will be hard to respect the real-time constraints every time. And let's finish here with a last modification of the rules. Let's come back to the 40 seconds deadline. Now I will add one more constraint. You should not take less than 30 seconds to complete the challenge. Simply put, if you run too slow or too fast, well, you fail. The point is to arrive on time, not before, not after. So with this real life analogy, you should now have a better idea of what are real time constraints. And now let's come back to robotics. And I'm going to start by saying again that real time constraints are really important in robotics. Imagine that you are designing and optimizing a production line, including many robotic arms, conveyors, cameras, and also people working on the uh, production line. So safety first. You need to make sure that the robotic system stops before a human can be hurt. If someone is hurt, it's really bad and it's really too late and the deadline for computing and stopping the machines is totally missed. So here real-time constraints are super, super important. And then after safety, well, you have to focus on the production. Let's say that some cameras are used to sort objects that are passing by, okay, on the conveyor, and a robotic arm will pick the objects depending on the camera decision. If the camera response is coming after the object has passed under the robotic arm, well, it's too late. It is certainly not as critical as hurting someone, but still the task has failed at a different level. So there is also a notion of precedence in the different real-time tasks, okay? In this production example, we have identified two constraints. The system first must react fast enough not to hurt anyone, and second, it must react fast enough to avoid missing some objects in the production line. But what is supposed to happen when those two constraints are applied at the same time? Well, that's where the precedence takes place. In the global system, the constraints to not hurt people will be given a higher priority. It kind of seems like we are in an Isaac Asimov novel here, right? So, if at some point a human is walking in a dangerous zone, then the safety constraint will preempt any other production constraints. To quickly recap here, a real-time system is a system that has to complete a task or a list of tasks on time. And again, note that real-time does not necessarily mean fast. The only thing the system should do is to arrive on time. In real life, for example, to catch a train, well, you must arrive before the train leaves the station, of course. That makes sense. But whether you arrive one minute before or half an hour before, it doesn't change anything because you will still catch the train. Okay, so you may add a certain uh, amount of minute before as a safety. Okay, but if you are in the train, you are in the train. That's it. In a production line, if, for example, the camera has 50 milliseconds to detect an object, okay, that's the maximum, then doing it in 10 milliseconds or in 40 milliseconds will not change the outcome here. Let's now focus on the different types of real-time constraints. Because missing a deadline for a real-time task does not necessarily have the same impact and consequences. So there are three main types of real-time constraints depending on your application and the results that you expect. 
hard real-time constraints, firm and soft. And let's see some more details about each of them and the differences between the three types with a few real-life examples for each. So let's start with hard real-time constraints. This one is the most strict constraint. For hard real-time constraints, a failure to meet only one deadline means that the system has critically failed and there is absolutely no flexibility here. Usually real-time constraints are applied to critical systems such as um, here rockets for example. You have a rocket going uh, to the moon. Well, what if one propulsor is not working on time? Uh, well, the rocket is just explodes. And well, that's something you don't really want, okay? Um, another example is an air traffic control. And well, it's simply not imaginable that two planes will collide, okay? We are not in a Hollywood movie here. So such an event would be a dramatic failure of the system. So you have to ensure that each plane has enough time to pass and that two planes are not just gonna land uh, at the same time and not just gonna crash into each other. Then, for example, with an autonomous car control, well, the autonomous car has to make sure that it's gonna stay on the road, okay? It should stay on the road and, and you don't have that much flexibility, all right? You can't just wait a few seconds before saying, okay, maybe I should turn a bit left to stay on the road, or maybe I should turn a bit right to avoid uh, just going through the people in front of me, okay? Another example with cars is the anti-lock brake system or ABS. Okay, that's something that is almost in any car. And well, when you have to stop in an emergency situation, you can't just expect that the ABS is going to work only 99.99% .99 of the time. No, it should work 100% of the time. And well, let's finish with a production line here. Let's say that in a production line, we have a risk of uh, collisions between two paths. So for example, two robotic arms that are operating on the same space. And well, if one is missing a deadline, boom, collision and broken system. And so here you can see that we have uh, situations where people may be hurt or even killed. And we have situations also where the, just the system itself is gonna be broken. Okay, so if you break the system, if you break the production line, well, you just can't continue. And okay, that's it for hard real-time constraints for now. Let's go to firm real-time constraints. And those ones are just a little bit less straight. With firm real-time constraints, if you miss a deadline, it is not fatal to the system. However, the result has zero value. So anything you produce with a firm real-time constraint and the constraint is not met, zero value. You can just throw the result away. And usually firm real-time constraints will uh, imply a loss of productivity or, for example, of revenue or can have also different consequences. For example, if you have a storm forecast system, well, let's say that this uh, forecast system is going to detect a storm a bit later, just after it has passed. So the result is kind of useless because the storm has passed. However, this is not critical to the system because the storm forecast can still continue to work. So then you may maybe want to um, fix it in some way so that it can work better the next time, okay? But here the result has zero value. And let's come back to production line in a different scope, okay? For example, um, here I'm gonna talk again about this camera thing where the camera has to detect some object and then a robotic arm will pick the object here, if the camera detects the object too late for the robotic arm to reach it, well, the object is just gone and maybe the, the result has zero value because the object is maybe gonna go in the, in the bin, in the trash directly. And now let's see the third type, which are soft real-time constraints. And well, for soft real-time constraints, missing a deadline uh, is not fatal to the system and the result can still have some value to a certain point. For soft real-time constraints, each missed deadline can degrade the overall system performance. This can often be associated to what you may already know as quality of service. 
Okay, so quality of service, software real-time constraints, we are in something similar here. So a few examples. Let's start with video streaming. Okay, so everybody uses video streaming. Um, some pixels sometimes are not displayed correctly, okay, because it's a bit late. Okay, the bandwidth can be slow for a minute, so you will miss some pixels. That's okay because the video will still play, just with a lower resolution or lower quality. So as long as you don't just see a bunch of pixels every 10 seconds, that's still viewable, okay? So here, quality of service. Um, video games, for example. So you might experience some lags when you play due to your computer not being powerful enough, for example, uh, or maybe two problems with your internet. So you can still continue to play the video games and, and, and finish the video games, but your overall experience is degraded. So for example, if you play a game on your computer that has no competition, well, it, it can be okay. But if you play a game online and it is a competitive game, and if you have too many lags, well, you just can't compete and you just can't play the game. So in this case, the result will have almost zero value, okay? So with soft real-time constraint, you may have from 0% to 99 or 100% of value, okay? So it can really depend. But you can also, of course, as you can see, reach the 0% where the result is completely uh, useless. And let's finish here by coming back to this production line again and with another example. So let's say that now, even if a camera is late to give the coordinates uh, of an object uh, to a robotic arm, well, the arm will still be able to pick the objects because the conveyor will stop just for a while. Okay, in this case, you don't have any missed object and missed result, but the total time to complete the batch of uh, objects in the production is gonna be longer. Okay, so the result is not zero or one. The result will be, for example, 90%, 80%, 60%, etc. And as you can see, for the same system, for example, the production line here, you may have the three types of constraints at the same time. The hard real-time constraints, the firm, and the soft ones. And with all that said, when should you care about real-time constraints as a robot developer? Because if you develop a robot, it is important for you to know when to think about those constraints or not, okay? Here I will show you three things that usually need to meet real-time constraints. This list is not exhaustive at all, okay, this is just to give you a few ideas. So let's start with low-level code. Almost everything which is low-level and close to the hardware is subject to real-time constraints. For example, a firmware that controls a servo motor. The firmware needs to give an appropriate command to the motor at a certain frequency so that the movement can be smooth. If some commands are missed, well, the axis where the motor is attached may have some jerky movement, okay? And this may lead to premature wear on some parts, or worse, it can damage the system, which then can't correctly complete a task. Then you have also, so second, a decision algorithm. In some situations, your robot will have to make important decisions. When to stop and when to turn for an autonomous car, how to replan a trajectory for a robotic arm, etc. The decision process here has real-time constraints. You need to make sure that the robot decides what to do before the result of the decision becomes useless and it's too late to avoid security issues, for example, or breaks in the system, or failure to complete a task. And well, the third point here is synchronization between devices. This applies when you have a robotic system with different devices and robots cooperating to do one common task. In a traditional assembly line, again, you will have to make all devices communicate between each other. If one machine is responsible to manage when the robot A should move a part and when the robot B should take the part, then a failure of the machine to respond fast enough will lead to a failure to complete the task, all right? And another example is in a simple mobile base, so a robot, a mobile robot, controlled with two servo motors for the two wheels and one Arduino board, for example, 
Real-time synchronization of the two motors is very important. If the two motors are not correctly synchronized, well, you won't be able to make the robot go straight. And following on that, let's actually focus on some accessible hardware boards you can use in hobby projects or prototypes. So for example, Arduino and Raspberry Pi. So here I'm not going to fully explain what they are. Okay, this would take a very long time, but very, very basically, we are going to compare microcontrollers and microprocessors here. And let's start with Arduino. So an Arduino board contains a microcontroller. A microcontroller has no real operating system. Basically, it will just execute the program you wrote and that's it, nothing else. So a microcontroller can be considered as a real-time system. You can be sure that no executed task will be preempted by an operating system allocating more or less resources for some applications. So using a microcontroller with Arduino, for example, or the STM32 family or other kinds of microcontroller for low level code is quite appropriate. Okay. You can control motors. You can communicate with other devices, read values from sensors and all that with real time constraints. And now let's look at the Raspberry Pi. A Raspberry Pi board is basically no more than a normal computer with a microprocessor. You can install some operating systems like Windows, Ubuntu, Debian, and you can run your Raspberry Pi as you would run a laptop. However, all those operating systems are not real time. They manage the resources allocated to all the different programs in a way that allows all applications to run and new applications to start not too slowly. For example, if you start a web browser like Firefox, other applications may slow down or even freeze for a while so that Firefox can correctly start and then back to the normal. So it means that when using a non-real-time operating system, you can't be sure that your application will always get the necessary resources needed to respect the timing constraints you may have. A solution to that could be to use a real-time operating system for example, Artos. So by default, Raspberry Pi is not real time, but that could be fixed. And to conclude here, well, you have to know that when you develop an application and if you have real time constraints, then it doesn't mean that everything in your application should be real time. Writing code that respects those constraints is often harder and takes more development time. The best solution when designing and implementing a robotics application is first to check which areas of your application need to respect real-time constraints and also which areas don't need to respect them. Then you sort those constraints by their importance, so hard, firm or soft real-time constraints. And then you analyze what hardware, what operating system and what software best practice you need to use in order to use those constraints. Finally, you will have a system containing both real-time parts and non-real-time parts. And now, to see if you correctly understood the video, I'm gonna give you a real-time constraint challenge. The challenge is the following. You have to hit the like button on this video before the video ends, otherwise we will have a critical failure on this channel and also your computer will start to burn. I mean, you don't want to take the risk, right? So like the video, thank you for watching, and I will see you in another tutorial.